Now, salt is another issue here because salt causes strokes because it raises your blood pressure. But it doesn't cause a stroke just by raising your blood pressure. It also causes a stroke because when you eat salt, it causes microvascular hemorrhages. It causes pinpoint and small inflammation and irritation to the inner wall of your blood vessel. Salt damages the endothelium. And when you stop eating salt, the endothelium continues to be damaged for a while. The progression continues of damage continues. There are two types of strokes. There's the embolic stroke and there's the hemorrhagic stroke. And the embolic stroke is caused by a clot. And the clot occurs because of some, usually the plaque breaks and some of the cholesterol gets exposed to the, to the blood, to, into the blood, inside the blood vessel, and a clot forms. A clot forms because you have a fissure or crack in the, in the, in the wall of the blood vessel. It's an inflammation, like you cut yourself. The body signals something damaged, something broke, and it sends, sends a clot um, a, to seal the, 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 the defect. And it, the clot propagates and includes the vessel and causes a heart attack or a stroke. A traveling clot is called an embolus. A stationary clot is called a thrombus, but it's still a clot. It causes most heart attacks and strokes. But there's another type of stroke, a type of stroke that's more dangerous, more deadly, called a hemorrhagic stroke. It's not caused by a clot. That's called, caused when the fragile blood vessels in the brain break and explode, allowing the, the blood to bleed into the brain that can kill you or keep you paralyzed like a vegetable for the rest of your life in a nursing home, a very dangerous type of stroke. And these very dangerous types of strokes are more prevalent in people who have less atherosclerosis and lower cholesterol levels. Because the process of building of high cholesterol on a poor diet thickens the blood vessels. And it's the more fragile, thinner blood vessels that are more prone to breaking under the pressure of high blood pressure. So we see the most hemorrhagic strokes in Asian countries and populations that eat less meat and less cheese and less bacon with more salt. We see in those countries more stomach cancer from the salt and more hemorrhagic strokes from the salt. What I'm saying to you now is that as you eat a diet style that's more protected against heart disease, if you still consume lots of salt, you're not going to be protected against hemorrhagic stroke because protecting yourself against heart disease and protecting yourself against clots doesn't protect yourself against having a hemorrhage. Only reducing your salt intake can do that. Did you follow that? You don't want to reduce your risk of heart attack and just substitute another cause of death in its place is what they do in Japan and China and South Korea, South Korea. In South Korea and Japan, they have 10 times as much hemorrhagic strokes as they do here. But they have much less heart attacks. So instead of people dying of heart attacks, they're dying of hemorrhagic strokes. Because their diet's different, because they're still consuming way too much salt. Now the Accord study was a study on diabetics. They gave diabetics more medical care, more doctor's appointments, following them very closely with the diabetic nurse practitioners to make sure their glucose was kept low as possible, close to a normal range with the appropriate care and appropriate drugs. And the government had to go in and stop the study because more people were dying, the more they had better and more medical care. <laughs> more medical care, more death. Why is that? Why did more medical care cause more death? Why does better glucose control cause more death? Because the drugs, right. Because you have a failing beta cells in the pancreas that are overworked because you're overweight. So they give you a drug to make the pancreas work harder to produce more insulin to lower the glucose down. They're, over, they're already dying, of the cells are dying being worked so hard, you make them work harder. And the drugs that make you produce more insulin make you gain weight more. You accelerate the rate of this person's demise. And so the government had to reach in and stop the Accord study because the results showed that the more they had more medical care, more death. Less medical care, less death. Does that mean it's better not to let your glucose run high? Doctors are interpreting this as they should give people drugs but not get their glucose so well controlled. That's not the answer. A, low, a higher glucose is not more favorable. A lower glucose is more favorable. You just can't get, earn it with drugs. You have to earn it with diet and lifestyle. 
You have to eat yourself, and they don't know how to get a person to eat themselves into a lower cholesterol, because they don't want to have to tell people they have to, how they have to change the way they eat, because that's too time consuming. And they don't have the training. They don't have the training and the motive, they're not skilled in the art of motivation and nutritional education. And they're not, they're not, it's, it's not a skill set they learned in their bag of tool tricks, of tricks, right? And these drugs that, I, that, that um, we use for diabetics make people gain weight. Type 2 diabetes is caused by excess fat on the body. These drugs accelerate your death. And I feel very strongly that these sulfonylureas, like diabetes and glucotrol and diabetes and, and these, some of these drugs should be off the market. Doctors should not be allowed to prescribe them. 